Welcome to the award-winning Gail Scott Keys Entertainment Now. Five years and counting, a show that highlights the great talent from the past to the present, as well as featuring new talent you'll hear more about in the future. And now, here's radio and TV broadcaster and your host, Gail Scott Key. No doubt they're universally acclaimed all-time favorite girl group, and today they're a cultural icon for charm, wardrobe, and glamour. They top the charts with 12 number one smash singles, sustain the legacy with 33 top 40 hits, with sales of 20 million singles. Now, the original Supremes that formed in 1962 were Diana Ross, Florence Ballard, and Mary Wilson. But did you know over time, there would be a total of eight ladies who contributed to the group's recording and performing success. Hello and welcome to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now on Tap the Mic Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining in because this is a treat, folks. I don't know about you, but I always thought that there were the three Supremes. And yes, I'm talking about Diana Ross, Lawrence Ballard, and Mary Wilson. But... Of course, they are the originals, but between 1967 to 1977, there were a total of eight ladies who became part of the Supremes. Now, Sherry Payne and Suze Green, formerly of the Supremes, are genuine members of the Motown recording trio, with the third being the most recognized as the original member of the renowned singing performing group, Tony Orlando and Don. And she is, of course, Joyce Vincent. Now, all three are on the line right now. And ladies, we have so much to talk about. But first, thank you so much for joining me. I am so excited to have Sherry Payne, Suze Green, and of course, Joyce Vincent on the line. Ladies, thank you so, so much for joining me. (laughs) Now, I've got to tell you, I've been doing my homework. I've been trying to connect the dots. I didn't know there were so many of you beautiful ladies that contributed to the Supreme franchise. So I'm going to kick it off with Sherry Payne, if I can, because Sherry, I know in 1973, you became the trio's final lead singer. And that is when Jean Terrell and Linda Lawrence left the group. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. They did label me as a a final lead singer, but at that time, um, Mary started doing uh, some of the lead, sharing some of the lead. And um, and I think that was probably too because I had so much to learn in the beginning. It was just impossible to learn all the, all those songs. But she said, "Well, I'll help you out, such and such and such." And then when Suze came in, Suze we were sharing more leads. It wasn't just uh, one person doing all the leads. And it was during through 1973 and 77 on the final three Supremes LPs. He's my man. I'm going to let my heart do the walking. And you're my driving wheel. Also, let yourself go. Those are the singles that you sang lead on in Motown's closing chapter of the Supremes. But it's officially recognized as, as the act's final lead vocalist. And also, it seemed it was around the world as a little lady with the big voice. I love that. I love that because your picture just shows a beautiful face. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness! <laughs> so you were a no. force to be reckoned with. <laughs> but, you know, initially, I, I didn't really like it. I thought, are they trying to say that I sing loud? And then when Suze came in, uh, seventy-six. I don't know. No, I'm short, but she says shorter than me, <laughs> and she has this beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voice. voice. That's it. Well, now that's how it should say Little lady with the big voice. <laughs> yes. Well, you, you know, it's, it's amazing how they title it then, but it's all a compliment because what's really amazing is even after everyone disbanded, of course, when Diana Ross left, she came back in 2000 and toured with the original Supreme. It was you and including Linda Lawrence at that time. And you guys were like on this world tour. So it must have been something, you know, when you had started in 1973 and then to come back in 2000 and, of course, perform with the original uh, Diana Ross. So that must have been, uh, how was that for you through the changes of time? And, and, and what was it like performing from the time of 1973 and then to 2000 with Diana Ross? Wow, it was just overwhelming. I was um, I'm, I was just bowled over. And... Linda and I couldn't have had a more wonderful time on that trip. Diana was so wonderful to us. 
And I know she oh. had this label, this negative label, but we never saw any of that, and we shared a lot of moments together, uh, just in private conversation. And she said to herself, that she, you know, I've grown over the years. I've really matured, and I could see that. She said, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. God has really blessed me. And I was just so touched by her, but she was just couldn't have been more marvelous to us on that trip. It was just a whirlwind tour. That's amazing. And in 1976, as you said, Suze Green, you replaced Cinder Bird's song, who replaced Florence Ballard back in 1967. Whew, I had to do my timeology here. I was like, yeah. let me just get them correct. <laughs> and I understand. I know. I'm trying to get an A after this because I'm. This is a history class, ladies. We are going to bring it home for them. <laughs> so, oh, bless your heart. All right, all right. So, Suze, you had um, you had attended the New York City High School of Performing Arts, and you prior to joining the Supremes, you sang with Ray Charles, Ray Letts, and Stevie Wonder. Wonder Love, and in 1973, you sang the lead as a guest vocalist on the new uh, birth hit, Until It's Time for You to Go. You are a successful singer. You do have a powerful voice. What was that like for you before you became part of the Supremes? Well, I'm, I'm a showbiz kid. You know, my parents were in show business, and it was inevitable that I would be in show business. My mother coached me from the very beginning, and she is the one who actually got me involved in the Supreme, Bob Jones, who was the head of publicity at Motown. But prior to that, I had, you know, various jobs. I always sang leads, and I always had my own spot with Ray Charles and with Stevie Wonder as well when traveling the world. So I'm eternally grateful to them for showing me the world, literally. You know, they took me out of the Old when I first started with Ray, and to be able to to, to go to Oslo, Norway, and then beyond, you know, all over the world, <laughs> <laughs> almost every little town in America. You know, the thing about Ray was Ray was so famous that he could get in a cab on his own and go anywhere in the world, and someone would help him because they knew who he was. Oh, and then being awesome. Like, Wonder Love was just the most marvelous writing experience. Mm-hmm. I wrote songs with Stevie and, and then Denise Williams, first million selling yes. in Wonder Love. Three. And you, all, you also wrote for Michael Jackson, too, from what I understand. Yes, I was very blessed. You, I wrote that song, I Can't Help It, with Stevie Wonder, and he presented it to Michael. And then, of course, recently it was featured in the From Motown, Michael Jackson, From Motown to Off the Wall in Spike Lee's documentary. Wow. So you never know where a song is going to take you. You really don't. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Especially with such legendary artists. I mean, does it really, uh, when you think about it, performing, you know, with these legendary artists, Ray Charles and with Stevie Wonder and with Michael Jackson and Denise Williams. And of course, with the loss of Michael Jackson, that's been such, such a hole in the music industry, but to know that amazing artists like yourself had written, you know, these hit songs, how does that make you feel when you look back on his life now, when you think about it and hear that song playing, where does that take you personally? Well, it it takes me, if I, if I think about it, in a light way, you know, being able to get the opportunity to write with Stevie Wonder was a tremendous opportunity. He really taught me how to write songs and how to dig in and do something that was unique, you know, and, and my, I mean, we worked on many, many songs. Some have been out, some haven't, but it, it just changed my life and the way that I think about creativity. But I used to watch Ray Charles every night. I'd go on stage, and he would go on before the relax. And I would watch. And it's the same with any major star that you look at, you know, who they're experts in what they do. Being able to stand back and see Michael grow as a, from a little child and then watch him grow into the star that he became. There was, there's no one that has done what he did, you know. So for me, when Michael passed, it was it was such a sad thing for the world, for the yeah, long yeah. Mm. world. But yeah. for me, for yeah. me, you know, to see a, an artist who had been a child who, who literally had no childhood, and it was yeah. a cautionary yeah. tale. 
what can happen. Yes. You know, expressing yourself or putting a child in that situation. But what came from it personally was when my cat, literally thousands and thousands of people reached out from across the world. I've never seen anything like it. And it made you yeah. realize how when you go from the inception of a song, you don't expect that to happen. You don't expect it to just blow up like that. And you expect right. people you know, people saying, my baby was born to that song. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, absolutely. And and of course, um, we know and this is an interesting part how Joyce, you became part of the group because in nineteen seventy seven when Mary Wilson left the Supremes for a solo career Joyce Vincent was chosen to take her place by Sherry Payne and Suze Green, but unfortunately it was decided by Motown to disband the Supremes before Joyce officially joined. And I'm thinking, wow, but it wasn't until later that you finally, you know, uh, what had happened with Sherry Payne and Suze Green had, they were singing together and they wanted to, uh, they really wanted to keep this going and asked her to be part of the trio. And of course, for those of you, who may not know, in 1992, Grammy-nominated and American Music Award winner Joyce Vincent was of Tony Orlando and Don fame, and she joined Sherry Payne and Suze Green to complete the trio. So you are already moving and shaking, and all of a sudden you get this call. What was that like when the ladies asked you to be part of that, finally? Before Joyce speaks, let me clarify something. Joyce joined, actually, Linda Lawrence and, and myself in 2009, Replacing uh-huh. a pregnant singing with us for approximately 13 years as former ladies of the Supreme, yes. Sherry and Linda, formerly of the Supreme. And so Joyce uh, replaced Freddie in 2009, so she had been singing with us already. And now oh, okay. um, decided to uh, pursue other avenues for her career. Yes. And um, my dear friend Linda, so she stepped down and to say green. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So now Joyce can expand on what I just said. Well, I tell you, it's a real honor to sing with these ladies. I've known Sherry for quite a few years. (laughs) (laughs) But it is such an honor to sing with these ladies and to continue this supreme legacy. It's it's awesome. You know, I I was a kid wanting to be a supreme back in the day. Oh, yes. Tell about it. Come on, talk about it. <laughs> and the fact that I am now really doing it, it's it's really mind blowing. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's fantastic. I just yeah. love it. I love these ladies. They are such awesome artists. Yeah. And it's just it's it's mind blowing. That's all I can say. <laughs> I love it. Hey, oh it? my goodness. You know it is so funny because you all created <laughs> well, you all created the young girl's dream, just like Oprah was saying in her accepted speech at the Cecil DeMille uh, Award, which was breathtaking. Awesome. You all awesome. took yeah. my breath away. Mm-hmm. You know, you all take my breath away because I was the only girl. I was born in 1969, but when I saw the Supremes, I'm like, I'm going to be one. And I remember putting a towel over my head and singing into the hairbrush until my brothers were peeking and find me. And, you know, they just, they just, crunch you. Like, look at Gail. I'm like, boy, be quiet. (laughs) So when you said you were dreaming about it, I was like, I was too. (laughs) But you all are much better at it. And I am so excited. And we are going to take a quick break. I don't want anyone to go anywhere because we are going to be back with the former ladies of the Supreme, Sherry Payne, Suze Green featuring Joyce Vincent and I don't want anyone to go anywhere because we're going to be talking about upcoming events, the release of the new project and what they have on tap just for you in just a minute. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Find out what's new on TuneIn and find Tap the Mic Radio on the TuneIn app for your phone. Tune in and Tap the Mic Radio. We're on. TapTheMicRadio.com There is more to me, Queen Eliara of Elfgard, than my elven magic. 
Just as there's more to GEICO than saving you money, GEICO also gives you 24-7 access to licensed agents online, on the phone, or on the GEICO app. And while I am a mighty elf queen, I am also a mighty big fan of barbecue potato chips. Minions! More smoky mesquite. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Okay, so five tacos of cheese and a large soda. That's $10,012. Please drive around. Wait, 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. CapTheMicRadio.com is looking for on-air personalities. Have you ever wanted to be on the radio? Are you a DJ who wants to be on the air and build an audience? Are you a podcaster? Do you currently have a podcast and want to expand your audience? Tap the Mic Radio Network is currently seeking talent. Whether it's a talk show or a music entertainment show, we'd like to hear from you. Email tapthemicradio at gmail.com. Tapthemicradio at gmail.com. Napa Know How. A Napa guy knows more isn't always better. Unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, waterbed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. You gotta wait. Ooh, you gotta give and take. Love don't come easy. It's a game of give and take. You gotta wait. You can't hurry. Back to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now, which you can tune into only on Tap the Mic Radio every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, with an encore presentation on Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. Hey guys, right now you're tuning in, and if you are, you are in for quite the treat because I've been talking to the former ladies of the Supreme, Sherry Payne, Suze Green, featuring Joyce Vincent, and they have been just filling up this half hour with such extraordinary memories and tales of what it's like to be part of the Supremes. And I know that we've been talking about with all three of you touring, uh, there are some great accomplishments and so much that we're trying to get in here. But let me ask you, um, you know, Sherry, what do we have on tap for the former ladies of the Supremes? Because I know you have been uh, playing, you've been singing quite a lot of areas. But what are we doing right now that uh, the listeners who are tuning in and have been joining us so they can check out and see performances and where? Well, for one thing, they can go on our website to see uh, all things that are current, uh, currently going on, which we do have a myriad of things. We're going to the Netherlands uh, in a couple of weeks to perform oh for a private event, so we're really excited about that. We always love going to that part of the world. And it's going to be really cold there, too. <laughs> Just gonna say, I, I was gonna say, girls, you better dress warm because that's gonna be like minus digits. <laughs> Furs are in order. Furs are in order. <laughs> Eight, um, I know uh, I can't off the top of my head think of uh, uh, definite ones, but uh, I know we have some dates in the, U- the UK. We haven't been there in quite some time, and that's in November. Yeah. So we're really My looking goodness. forward to going to the UK and all of our UK friends. Yes. And uh, we have a lot of things in between. A lot of things in between. Uh, yes. Now, now I had to ask you real, real quick because. I think that you work with or you perform with a dear friend of mine, because I understand when you're not recording and performing, Sherry, you are an avid writer and have written over 18 screenplays. And one of them happened to be it's, It Always Rains on Sunday, which was produced by Donald Welch. Now, yeah. I believe that that's the same Don B. Welch who was in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. What did you say? Is that the same Don Welch who was also, he is good friends with Will Smith from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? 
his best friend. Oh, my goodness. Don has been on my show and is such a supporter of the show. He oh, is I so amazing. I, <laughs> I love he, I just. <laughs> I just happen to, are you two going to be doing any future collaborations? Well, yes. Um, in fact, he said he was going to re-present uh, a play that he put on last year, well, actually 2016, of mine, a, a Lady in Waiting. And it was a drama about a woman on trial for murdering her husband. And, in fact, oh. uh, next month at the NAACP Theater Awards, two of the actresses from there have been nominated for Best Supporting Actresses. So Donald's the one who called me up back in the, in the first part of December, and he was so excited. Guess what? Guess what? You got two nominations. I said, wow. So I'm so excited. So he said he's going to do it again. And, um, oh and of course, uh, it always rings on Sunday to come back, although I've made some yes. changes. We can do more projects. I love Donald. I mm-hmm. consider him more like a brother. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. He is so down to earth. And I think what you should talk to him about is maybe doing something with all three of you, the former Supremes. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Because he'll be listening to this. <laughs> I will be your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, now that I'm thinking of it, I, I wanted to ask the the rest of you, both um, Suze and also Joyce, uh, Suze, what do you do when you're not performing, um, you know, when you're not getting on the stage? What do you do to, to release some of that creative energy? Well, I'm always writing, for one thing. I'm always, um, I just finished recording a lot of material over the past year and a half, almost two years that we'll get, we're getting ready to release. And then we're going to do some material among the three of us mm-hmm. very, very soon. Mm-hmm. But I've been involved in a lot of things. I, I'm the National Director of Film, Music, and the Arts for the Peace Prize Foundation, Woo! which you guys right. can wow. yes. Or, and that's along with Brian McGill and, and Jenny Young, who started the Simple Reminders Network, which is up and coming. And they've sold millions and millions of Simple Reminders books which I'm, I'm so proud of, you know, the work that they do. Just tremendous inspirational speakers, and I'm moving into that realm. I spoke That's just awesome. last at the Raw Science Film Festival. I, say, I sang and performed there, and the Raw Science Film Festival is a, a, a melding of art and science. So they're going to become mm. accredited this year. Mm, and it was just a tremendous event in Santa Barbara. Um, I also had the opportunity to speak. I'm moving into the inspirational field as well to try to uplift our youth and people in general. You know, people who are successful, All right. who strive really hard to do things and to, to conquer, you know, all kinds of subjects need encouragement as well. And that's why I went along. I was a judge for the, the film. Just a tremendous outing. There were films from all over the world, and people of all ages entered films into the film festival. Um, Star Wars actually won the uh, won one of the awards. Stranger Things won an award, and so many unknown independent filmmakers who are of all ages jumped in and came out with these tremendous films. It was just absolutely inspiring. We we oh my goodness. Astronauts and world famous wow. physicist <laughs> Kit Thorne, who just won a Nobel Prize for gravitational fields, attended by uh, stream. So it was really thrilling, you know, to oh to get the opportunity to um, to be involved in the the space community in that way. So I'm doing that, that. and wonderful. if I continue that around the world, but as we travel. It gives me a chance to reach out and see so many more people. Mm-hmm. So we, we have wonderful recordings. We have some things we're discussing. So we'll have new music from us mm-hmm. for you guys out there. So look for us. We're coming to you. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Believe you me, I, we are going to be playing all of your singles on Tap the Mic Radio, which we are excited for. And, of course, I wanted to make sure who has the last few minutes, Joyce Vincent, my dear. Yes. Tell us what you like to do when you're not recording. Give us the, uh, I'm sure it's just extraordinary. Others. Yes. What have you got going on? 
lots of music, D- many different uh, entities. I sing with um, uh, a friend of mine has a, a gospel a gospel choir that I'm very much involved in. And then I'm in the process of working on a cooking show. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on! I love to bake, and and uh, you know it, it's 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 all there. <laughs> now, now, I, I want to ask you, Joyce. I, I want to ask you because another star that I had on from Police Academy, she's looking to do the same, and I'm going to say the same to you. If you ever need someone in the audience, you know who you give the. Who, who you give it to, you know, the cooking, and you want them to test. I'm your girl. I won't be shy. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. I will remember that. One of my neighbors a fantastic songwriter. I put on, along with my daughter, put on, put on a musical this past, last summer, called uh, uh, The Dream Seekers, mm-hmm. and uh, Joyce wrote one of the songs in The Dream Seekers. It was just beautiful oh with the children saying, yes. Oh my daughter, Shoshana Payne Phillips, has a vocal studio called La Voix Studio, The Boy, exactly. in French, and we put on a musical that I had written a few years ago, and the Joyce, we added in Joyce's song. Oh, it was gosh. so fabulous. Yeah. 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 Hopefully there's oh. room for more. Yeah, oh, a lot more room. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, you women are amazing. You keep it going. And and unfortunately, I know the time is almost up, but I I want to, first of all, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. It has been an honor. And I do want to have all of you back. We will be playing all of your music on Tap the Mic Radio. But most of all, I want to thank you for the essence of bringing real music into you. Oh, it is my pleasure. It's been the former ladies of the Supreme, Sherry Payne, Suze Green, featuring Joyce Vincent. Do not miss them on Tap the Mic Radio. We are going to be playing them nonstop, and that's going to be coming up this Thursday, and it's going to go into the end of this month. Why? Because they're the Supremes. They are class, they are elegant, and you all better get with it. So tune in. <laughs> It has been an honor. <laughs> you all, I cannot, oh, I cannot thank you enough. And stay warm for the Netherlands. You guys will be out there. We'll be listening back here at home. It has been an honor from the bottom of my heart. And I do want to welcome you back when you come back from your trip so we can follow up with you. And I hope that you will. Okay. Sure well, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, ladies. Thank you so, so much. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Guys, okay. this is where it's at. The former ladies of the Supremes, they are class, they are elegant, and you don't want to miss any of them. Sherry Payne, Suze Green featuring Joyce Vincent. And we'll be right back right after this with more as I tell you who's coming up next week on the show. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> and that is it ladies thank you so so much I hope that was fun for all of you uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah. oh my god I definitely definitely want to have you back I, we are going to play you know why I can say that because I'm also the CEO of Tap the Mic Radio so that's why I can say how long it's going to play <laughs> And Sherry and Suze, formerly of the Supremes.com website. Absolutely. And I've got it. We'll make sure that we edit and put that in. You, All three of you will have the final word on that, I promise. So we'll do a nice right. package. And I will make sure that you all get a copy of the interview as well. And Thank honestly, you. an honor. Thank, Thank you so, you. so much. You guys stay warm. <laughs> you too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care, ladies. Can we, can we ask you one question, please? Of uh, course. Yes. Are you related in any way to Francis Scott Key? <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you something. This is a little interesting note. When I was uh, in broadcasting, I wanted to keep my my main name because I had lost half my family. So yeah. I wanted to keep my original name. When I married my husband, I couldn't have planned this any better. His last name is Key. <laughs> well, we come to find out 
there is some relation in his side of the family to Francis Scott Key. Wow. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. So when we write a book someday, when when I when I get to that point, we're gonna announce it. But um for right now, you know, I've been it, it's so funny, everybody was talking about it and, and I never thought of it, but then they started digging in the history and they found out there actually is some relation to Francis <laughs> Key with my husband's side of the family. So yeah. <laughs> It's true. Uh, it's amazing. So, it's just for the joke. I know. Be related. I know. I know. I was I was like, wait a minute. You're not supposed to be for real. What? <laughs> so yeah, the whole family was just like, wait a minute. Did she know this? And I was like, anytime you're in broadcasting, you always hyphenate your name so people will remember you, especially yeah. when you're doing jobs. And people on the outside of broadcasting, they, they don't know that. So um, they thought, well, is this a joke? And I'm like, no, right. this isn't a joke. It, it's real. Right. So my husband, uh, they, they found out they literally do have some ties with Francis Scott Key. So I'm like, all right, okay, we're going with this. This is cool. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll never get the residuals or anything. We'll just be like, hey, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm telling you, we, we we have if you guys come out to Boston or to New York, I have to come out to see you all. We'll, we'll all have a lot to talk about. See? <laughs> yes, yeah, we are. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You you have a wonderful, wonderful time and I will definitely catch up with you. Come back, okay? Hey, all Thanks right. Too. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> You've been listening to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now. Tune in to Entertainment Now Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and Saturdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on the Tap the Mic Radio Network. You can also hear the show on Blog Talk Radio and YouTube. Visit and like us on Facebook. And tweet Gail at Diva4Yoy. That's D-I-V-A, the number four, Y-O-Y. I'm Dorian J. This has been a TTMRN and DJVO production.